All right, guys, we're off from Expedition Team Overland. I'm here with David with uh, Kimberly Trailers here in uh, Western Central Ohio, I guess. Bell Fountain, Ohio. Bell Fountain, Ohio. Uh, it's close to me, so I was able to make this as a day trip. And uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Dave so he can go over the two different trailers that they have here at his shop here in Ohio. All right, thanks. Um, so we're going to go over the two different trailers here. One is the camper and then also the caravan. Um, to start off with, so Kimberly Campers has been in business over in Australia for over 25 years. They recently had a change in ownership and now are expanding to uh, the U.S. So this is probably the first video that's been made here in the U.S. And uh, we'd love to share with you guys the, the campers here um, and just uh, show the different features and the different options. So we're going to grab the camera possibly here in a little bit and move around over the trailer. This right here, though, is the, the camper. Okay. So the camper is about uh, 17 feet long. Um, it's really low profile, which is nice. So it, you can actually, see when you're towing, you can see over the trailer easily. Um, what's cool about this camper is that there is gobs of storage and a phenomenal kitchen. I would put this kitchen and this trailer against any other camper on the market right now. Um, so <clears throat> I can get into some technical details here if you want to. Yeah, that's great. Okay. And then um, we're going to, in its closed state here, and then we'll take it over, we'll open it up to show you guys how it opens, and then we'll go over to one that we have uh, behind the camera here that's that's open. So on this side of the trailer, um, <clears throat> we have shower here, uh, where external shower, and you can use it with a wand or do whatever. There's an ensuite that goes to the, to the um, tent in the back over there. Um, you can plug in directly to city water if you want to through a hose or you can um, just fill it up and then there's dual tanks on board, about 60 gallons of water between the two tanks. Um, hot water, um, also we use a, a Wabasso diesel um, hot water on it and then um, also an option for a diesel cabin heater if you want to. Um, on this side of the trailer, inside here, I won't open it up until we get to the other trailer, but there's storage in here. Massive storage up on top here uh, with the um, box up here, front storage nose cone here also, and then there's, um, on the other side is where the kitchen is. Uh, you can put um, whatever uh, you want to put up here if you want to, so we you can put wolf packs up here, you can put um, chairs, you can put other things. We have several different options here. Um, one would be a, a tinny, was what they call in Australia, a boat carrier that flops over here and gets out of the way so you can open up the tent. We have an ATV carrier if you want to, so you can, there's ramps right up here and you can put an ATV carrier option on here. We have um, options on the back here with the swing away arm if you want to put a, a, a bike carrier on the back, if you want to put spare tire carriers, you can put dual spare tires on here, jerry can carriers, outboard trailer carriers, so a bunch of different options there on the outside. Um, other options are a winterization package. We have heating elements inside each one of the tanks with um, um, the tanks are insulated plus all the lines are insulated. So you can get that right around 20 degrees um, Fahrenheit um, without those lines, worried about those freezing. Independent trailing arm suspension uh, with the um, airbags. Um, different options, you can have an auto, auto level if you want to. You can manual inflate, key fob in inflate or just uh, regular um, toggle buttons to inflate and level from side to side. Very, very well thought out um, suspension system here. In all reality, most Australian manufacturers have copied this system um, after Kimberly developed it. The chassis is hot dip galvanized steel. The rest of the body, I won't say the rest, but most of the rest of the body is aluminum or a different type of alloy metals here. So coming around front, um, we have an extended drawbar for um, easier towing and backing up and, and um, this particular one is the Kimberly Classic model, the camper model. It has hydraulic disc brakes that are by surge brake but on um, any other trailer besides this one they all come with uh, electric over hydraulic disc brakes, no drum brakes on any of our trailers. So the disc brakes are of super linear feeling compared to a drum brake. If they get wet they're going to still work. Um, just a far superior braking system than, than anybody else out there. Um, we have Anderson connector up front for your DC to DC charging of your lithium batteries. 
And then also this a regular seven-way connector for um, your exterior lighting. Um, this has the McHitch on the front. We have McHitch, a D035, if you want to do that. Or um, as another option, we also have the Treg coupler. So the three different options on the hitch depends on what you want. Um, awesome jockey wheel uh, made by Arc. Um, jacks up and down, folds out, rotates out of the way. You don't have to mess with taking the on or off or anything like that. It just it, it does its thing. It's super strong. Um, dual propane tanks. We'll get on the other one, but this opens up and has your kitchen area. We have all your cookers, and then you have your um, pantry and, and fridge and other things here. This is a slide-out kitchen, um, and we'll show that on the other unit here. And then also your pole storage for the different poles. Um, on the side here, we have um, inlets for shore power. Right here, it's a smart plug that we use at a, um, right here in the U.S. And then we also have your three-prong plugs to distribute power to outside here. Um, on board, uh, some of the electronics, there's a 300 amp hour lithium battery that's standard, um, DC to DC charging, and also AC to DC charging um, that comes standard on, on these models. Um, if you want to, you can option uh, either no inverter or a 2000 watt pure sign inverter. Um, so that's the outside of this trailer. Uh, there's one other thing in here. You can access storage underneath here. The, this is the bed on top here, but then you have all this storage that's underneath here um, to put whatever you need. Like uh, my wife and I and the kids, we actually have the plastic totes that we slide out and we put our dry goods underneath here to store for food. Um, so that is the outside of this trailer. Um, it's been around the block with our family. My wife and I, we have 10 kids. And people ask us all the time, like, how do you camp with 10 kids? Well... There's a queen size bed in here, and we're going to show you the other annex and other areas. My wife and I sleep on that bed. We stuff five to six of the minions in the um, on, uh, the actual extended bedroom and in the hard floor area here, and then we have four kids up in a rooftop tent. So that's how we camp um, with all of our children. So people ask, how easy is this thing to set up? Um, it couldn't get any easier, in my opinion. So you have a latch here latch here, and then you have um, these lockable um, latches here. And then this, this guy right here is um, assisted, hydraulically assisted. You take it, I'm just make sure I'm not going to hit any of my lights there. And you grab it. And you pull it over like that. You're going to take this part of the tent. And there's a spreader bar that goes in here, it spreads it out, and it's set. It's done. Okay? It's set up. And then reverse order of operation, you're going to collapse the tent back in here like this. I'm going to, basically, I'm not going to do the full thing, but you're going to pull it like this, back over, and this accordion's all down, and you just stuff it back in, and you're done. So, one, it's a one-person job if you want to. Two people make it that much faster, but as you saw there, it was open and then closed. So super uh, easy to do. We're going to jump over to the one that's open now, and then I'll show you all the different features of that. Okay, so we're going to go over wheels and tires really quick. Um, you can stuff underneath here a 35-inch tire. That's the largest that we can get. Bolt patterns, we're pretty variable, so um, standard is a... Um, 5x139 or you can get a 6x6.5 um, so it just depends on what pattern that you want so like I said you can get a standard 6x5.5 or the Toyota bolt pattern, a Land Cruiser bolt pattern um, is another option. We have within reason we have offset so we can try to match the um, wheel off or the track width of your vehicle so where, where does that come into play? Like it really doesn't matter if you're going down a gravel road or if you're going um, down the road, regular road, but when that comes into play is like in the desert sand or in the beach sand. Um, so if you have your track width of your trailer and your vehicle the same, you're not cutting new trails through the sand. Um, if you've ever experienced it where your track width is not the same, your trailer will will be wagging the dog. Like it will it will move you because it's trying to find the track that your your truck just um, cut, 
and um, it will it will not be a fun experience. So try to match track with the best you can, and um, within reason we can we can get that um, done. Uh, B BFG tires are standard on it, but in all reality, whatever tire you want on there, within the size realm that we have, we can put those on there for you. Okay, right. so we're going to go over the kitchen options here on the camper. So opened up this box here, um, which is our driver's side here in the U.S. Um, you have different options for lighting. You can go, um, you know, the different orange or white lights if, if you choose, um, just to light this area up. Um, as part of our electronic system here, we have uh, used a side marine. It gives you the battery indicator here. It also gives you... Uh, fridge temperature, freezer temps, DC charging from either our solar or the vehicle, battery consumption, things like that. You go down here, it'll give you drinking water um, um, level and then general water level. It'll give you shock temperatures. So when you're going over corrugations, um, you want to know your shock temps, and this will give you your shock temps. Fridge temps, it'll give you pitch and roll. So when you come to camp, you want to be able to level it, and it can tell you your pitch and roll, and then barometric pressure. Um, so that's just an overview of that system there. Webasto, um, diesel hot water. You have a, a Hella plug here with the USB plugs here, and different um, switches here to turn on your your water pump and things like that. Um, so this side, um, you have this slide out here, and then um, there's several different options for cooking. Okay, this is um, what we call the wok burner. Huge BTU, you can cook a lot of stuff here, boil water, cook stuff really fast. And then um, this is the dual burner griller. Two burners here, and then there's a griller underneath um, that you can use to grill with. If you want to, you can get a Weber barbecue here, or you can get one of these here and another one here. So there's uh, uh, several combinations of, of cooking here. Um, around here, up top, you have um, pantry storage here, and then inside here, huge deep cavern here for more pantry storage and pots and pans or whatever you want to put there. We use an upright fridge freezer, 82 liter. Um, I prefer these because I'm not digging in my chest freezer to get in here. I guess I'm a little mixed. For chest freezer, they have a, a definitely a good application, high volume, easy to use, but the uprights, um, they are nice because you're not digging through stuff to get all the way to the bottom of anything. Fridge freezer, you will notice, and I'm sure there's people on YouTube that are going to comment, like the freezer is so small. Absolutely is way too small in my opinion. So we have an option on the other side for a 12 liter freezer um, that you can just use to freeze stuff with. Um, and then sliding out the kitchen here, um, we have this guy slides out. On this side here, you have your, you can you know, all your cutlery and stuff in here if you want to. Um, huge deep drawers right here for, um, we put all of our longer utensils and other stuff in here. And then paper products for when we were camping, I'll go in here. Other big things we put on like our saran wrap, whatever uh, aluminum foil things in there. There's also a fire extinguisher and then more um, storage in here for longer items. Hot water on demand. Here, well, not on demand, but the diesel hot water is here. There's a light here that you can use to broadcast light across the, the work surface here to be able to um, see what you're doing. And then on this side, this is one of our favorite options for the kids, is we have um, a bunch of little kids here. Um, and they need a place because they want to be here with mom and dad and be cooking and helping out. So this is low enough for them to, um, to sit at and to be helping out when we're cooking. Um, there's you know, little features like this you see, this little rack here you can hang your rags on um, to be able to dry when, after you're washing up. Um, so this kitchen right here has massive space here to prep with and to cook with. So you can cook over there, go back and forth between cooking and prepping. So in my opinion, one of the best kitchens out in the market right now. So on the front nose box here, same system um, as far as the tongue and everything, there is a difference here where this, this is the Platinum Edition of the, of the camper, and it has um, a Hydrostar. Um, it's electric over hydraulic for the disc brakes. Um, if you want to set your parking brake, for example, um, you're going to pump it up right here, and at the same time, turn that, and the emergency brake is set. Okay. 
um, airbag um, to level and stuff like that. There is a key fob here that you can press either inflate or deflate and that can um, um, move uh, or adjust the airbag up and down um, to level it when you're at camp. Um, there's jerry can holders on the side there and also a place here to um, strap down a generator if needs be. On the nose cone here, on the Platinum Edition, you have a um, 90 watt um, Merlin solar panel here. Um, and then up here is just massive storage. You can put all your tents and canvases and things like that. I didn't even go over the canvases, but I will here in a second. Um, up here um, for storage. Um, we can do, um, you'll notice that there are, uh, this has a little bit different paint job. We can do custom paint jobs to match your vehicle within a certain realm of colors. Um, but that's an option for the trailers. Coming around to our, the U.S. Um, passenger side, um, this is where that 12 liter uh, freezer can go, slide out here. And then inside here, there's um, probably a cubic foot and a half here of storage. And then you open this up, and this gives you another massive bay of storage area here for food or for gear, for whatnot, whatever you want to put in there. Um, fuse boxes are easily accessible here and here. This is the diesel um, supply for the hot water on demand and also for the cabin heater. Then a DC to DC charger from Enerdrive there. Um, same system over here where we have the, the showers um, and water dispensing and intake there. Um, our canvas is Australian canvas, super heavy duty and waterproof. Um, to get it waterproof, you do need to go through a couple of sessions of getting it wet and dry, getting it wet and dry, and then that will expand um, the fibers, especially where it's been sewn through, and then make it waterproof. Um, we were just out of the Outer Banks for a week, and after the, since it's a relatively new trailer, I went over there, it had not been in any rain, but it went through a couple cycles of rain and dry, and by the end of the week, we had no issues with any water. At all. But just something you guys need to do, you need to condition the canvas if you, if you do this. Um, around this side here, this one has one of the options. It's a swing away arm that swings away, away the back there. That's so you can put in whatever um, uh, bike carrier you want to do in here. And just, just um, when the trailer's closed, this will swing out and go around to the back of the trailer there. Probably um, somebody's going to ask, how do you condition the canvas? And I briefly went over that, and I apologize for not going into detail. So with the canvas, um, you can get a garden hose and, and do it if you want to, but really you're going to be out there for a long time. Just set up your trailer when it's wet, like raining outside, and let it get wet, and then, and then let it dry out. And then do that a couple times, cycle through that uh, three or four times, and then your canvas will be conditioned for the, the wet weather. Um, I don't do it with the garden hose because our water here is like drinking out of the welding bucket and shop class is so bad that we just don't, we don't use the water in our shop here for that. So um, rain is probably the best way to do it and the easiest way to do it. Um, so we have a couple options on awnings here. So this is the quick awning. It zips on in a couple of minutes and um, it's supported by um, these two arms here off the side of the trailer. You can, um, right now I have the ends folded under just um, because I didn't want, we obviously we can't put a stake in inside the um, co concrete here to hold it up. But if you wanted to, you can pull those out and you zip on a Bedouin extension. And what that is, is it's a couple fingers that come out <clears throat> and they will hold this. If you bury the, the if you stake that Bedouin down really well, we were in 50 mile an hour winds when that um, tropical storm came through um, uh, the East Coast a, a bit ago. And this thing was just fine. Like it held up just fine underneath here. So it's not going to rip down. As long as you just take it down, you're fine. Um, canvas noise, everybody asks about that. What about windy conditions and canvas noise? Um, it's going to be a little bit noisy. It's canvas. Um, and especially when you have this, it's like a broadside of a barn here. You know, it's going to be hitting that, um, the, the wind on there. But um, we slept through it just fine. It's just something that people ask about um, quite often. It's the canvas noisy. There is some noise, yes, obviously. Um, some other things on the outside here. Yeah, I do have an option for this this box here, which is just a it's it's a box where you can throw like recovery gear in or wet gear in. Just it's out of the trailer, dirty stuff that you want to put in there. Stainless steel box there. Um, let's walk inside here. What's what's a neat 
feature about this trailer is that you're never on the ground as far as sleeping. This, this was, as you remember, this was the roof when it was closed, but now it becomes the floor. Okay? And this floor is off the ground. So you're not climbing up on a rooftop tent. You're not in the ground um, outside here. So when there's critters or snakes or scorpions or whatever, spiders, you're, you're off the ground here and, at, and out of the dirt. And especially in wet weather, you're not sitting in the mud. Okay, um, so inside here, um, this area here is about six and a half feet long and about five feet wide, five and a half feet wide, okay? And when we're camping, we have several of our kids sleeping in this area, either in bunk bed cots or on the, on the, actually the hard floor here. And then we zip on an extra adder room that's on the back here. And then we stuff three or four more minions inside of there. Okay? And that's a great addition if you want more space out the back side there. Um, inside, on the other side here, we have a full-size, queen-size bed with an inner spring mattress. Very, very comfortable. Reading lights in the back there. There are two more 12-volt plugs in the back to plug in other devices if you want to. Um, you have windows on all four sides of the trailer to get breeze and uh, cross breeze through. LED lighting up on top here. There is a tropical canopy on top, so we have um, a layer of canvas here, and there's an air gap, and then another, another layer of canvas, and that um, drastically reduces the heating um, and the beating of the sun on the trailer, so it reduces the temperatures inside. Um, underneath here, um, there is a slide-out drawer here if you want that option. If not, you can get it without the slide-out drawer, and um, you can lift the bed, and there's hydraulic assist there. And underneath here is all the electronics, so you have your 3 and amp hour lithium battery, your AC to DC charging, and I'll grab that. Yep, yeah, got the light there. Your AC to DC charging. Um, you have a 2,000 watt pure sign inverter underneath there. And then just all the, the dead man switch for the battery and things like that. And then on this side over here, Webasto, um, it's the, the 2000 um, STC. Basically, it's the, uh, the air exchange heater here um, to heat this, this cabin area here. On the other side over here, we have toggle switches for you know, the different lights, um, USB plugs plus three prong plugs, so 120 volt, and then your inverter on here. You also have a Hella adapter here, <coughs> and then you have another USB plug. We do have a um, uh, heating blanket underneath the um, bed here to reduce condensation, so you can plug that in and it will reduce the con condensation on the, on, underneath your bed. Um, and then, the, like I said, this is the hard floor, has uh, commercial grade linoleum here. Um, and just a great easy space. If you want to configure it how you want to, you can put a table in here and have chairs in here if it's bad weather or put kids in here or however you want to. Just a, a great space to, to keep you out of the weather and to, and to relax and enjoy here. Also, you can put your pants on standing up. You don't have to lay in bed if you're in a rooftop tent or a small tent. Um, it's, that's, that's a nice feature. A lot of people ask, do I have to climb to get up into? There is a small step right here to get up into your bed. Not a big deal, um, but easy easy to get up in and out of. You're not climbing over your, your partner to get in and out of bed also. You can sleep north-south instead of east-west. All right, guys, so I'm going to go over some of the electrical here, not all of it. Um, a lot of people um, have questions of, hey, is this ready for the U.S. market? Is it 240 still? Is it 120? So... We already homologated everything for the U.S. market, so it's all 120, all 60 hertz, so it's literally, you don't have to do anything to anything to be able to have this plug into the wall from, um, if you want to charge it from shore power. Okay, so there's several ways to um, charge this trailer up from shore, you can either shore power, you can do it through the connector up front, through the DC to DC converter from your vehicle, or you can plug in solar. And they come with solar controllers, and they come in um, already with the DC to DC, so that, that's, that's easy. And also the shore power plug comes with it. All of our boxes, so all these storage boxes, come with LED lighting inside here, okay? So the LED lighting is all around the box, so at night you're not fumbling through. We do have an option also, we can do um, LED lighting all around underneath the trailer, so it um, lights up um, around the trailer and um, allows you... Basically, you're not tripping over, over things at night. Um, some other cool features that we have are 300 amp hours of lithium on these smaller trailers. On our larger trailers, we have up to 600, 900, whatever 
increments of 300 um, amp hours you want in lithium batteries. We use rely on batteries. We've had we have hundreds of those in the market, and we've had zero failures on those rely. So that we stay with those with that those batteries there. Um, the other, like I said, easy access to fuse panels if you ever need to. Um, everything's behind. There's a little, a couple screws there, so you're not fiddling and messing with them all the time. You don't really need to. Um, the Symarine on the other side, which is our window into the system, that is bulletproof also. It gives you all the all the information that you need to. Another little unknown feature that we have in the trailers is a device here. Um, it's called Waitai, and it does a couple things. It is a wireless controller to your lights of your trailer. So if you don't want to plug in through your seven way, for example, then um, you install the um, mating component into your vehicle. And then once you get close to it, it will sync up with this and that will control all your lighting and all your braking um, via Wi-Fi. It's also a theft deterrent system. So um, that has an accelerometer in there. And once it feels a rocking or a moving of the trailer, it will automatically lock up your brakes and then it will send out a, a horn noise and then also it has a GPS locator so it's an anti-theft device too that you can get that as an option. Um, some other neat little features that are kind of unknown. Um, if you've ever been off-roading with your trailer, you're going to break your seven-way connector. You're going you're gonna to either forget to attach it, it's going to drag down the road and break. So instead of having these permanently um, wired to the trailer, we have a connector up front here that you can plug it into super easy and if you ruin this this uh, dongle here you just replace this little end here um, as, a, as a, a replacement part. So super easy um, just a nice little feature that I personally have ruined several seven-way connectors because of getting ripped off or whatever from a stick or a rock or whatever. But with that you can easily replace it. Um, again up front you have your DC to DC charging here and then an extra solar port, port here and you can put up to 40 amps of solar through that. That's a pretty significant amount of solar if you want to put um, through there. Um, other electrical things, I know it's a brake item, but it's electric over a hydraulic disc brakes on it. Um, very linear feeling, very smooth. And then coming around, um, there's hella plugs on the outside of the trailer and also, um, so hella plug here, this is where your shore power is, and then you have your three prong plugs here um, for if you want to plug in a, a blender or whatever thing you want on the outside here. Um, other than that, it's a pretty simplified electrical system. All of our trailers are loomed um, automotive style. So we don't have, just have random wires being run through the trailer. They're all loomed up. They all have automotive connectors on there um, so that we don't get corrosion and um, failures in, inside the connectors. Everything's crimped, heat shrinked, and then loomed up. Um, and laid out in the trailer. So again, it's uh, take an automotive approach to our electrical system so that it's, number one, it's easy to fix, easy to troubleshoot, and there's zero failure, uh, or at least I can never say zero, zero failure, but there's significantly reduced failures when you do it that way, instead of just running random wires. Um, but in summary, that's um, the camper. Uh, super, super easy to set up, take down, amazing kitchen area and wherever a lot of people ask like, where can I take this where do you want to go so if you want to go off-road a fire roads no problem that's I mean we these things have been in, in um, Australia for camper version for almost 25 years they've gone across the Simpson desert they've gone thousands and thousands of miles across corrugations and they hold up just fine um, you want to go rock crawling with them yeah you can but why would you go rock crawling with, anyway, you can if you want to. Um, uh, there's enough bash plates and enough protection underneath to keep stuff from getting broken. Um, it's designed for that. So wherever you really, wherever you want to go, you can go. Um, I'm not going to advertise this, but we've had water up to here on them. And they're dry inside. Okay. So, like, you can, uh, when you get the water high enough, they start to float um, from experience. So just... Uh, wherever wherever you want to go, you're you're not limited. Um, 
that pretty much sums up the camper. Hopefully we were able to answer all your questions that you had. Um, if, and if you don't, um, you can email the guy behind the camera. And uh, or um, it will be on his YouTube. And uh, we can hopefully answer all the questions there. All right, so we get a couple questions about the McHitch. And I know there's not a lot of information out there. So probably one of the simplest hitches to hitch up. Um, it has this long shank here, and then this is the receiver side here. Um, and basically, when you're backing up your vehicle, you just kind of need to get it in the area, and then you're going to put it in here. And I don't have enough force because I'm not backing up, but um, once you, um, it's not connected to a vehicle, but once you get it in here, this just locks down automatically, and you put this pin in through, and you're done. And then likewise, when you want to decouple it, as soon as you get your trailer where there is, you're going to use your jockey wheel to um, jack it up. As soon as you get your trailer to where there's no force on this, this little pin opens up, and then you can open this, and it comes right off. Okay, so super easy. Like I said, I don't have. A, I'm not backing into it, but when you when you back into this, this is going to lock in, and then when you're coming off, as soon as you get no force on here, it just um, decouples, and you're ready to go. Um, so that's the McHitch. How much articulation does it have? 360. Yeah, it's all degrees of freedom. So this will rotate in any degree of freedom that you want. Okay. Um, all over the place. And then the other one is a DO35. So this guy right here. Um, I don't have this tight on here, but this one's pretty simple too. You're going to back up your vehicle. You're going to lower your trailer down. And then this is going to snap in on here and then lock in like that. Okay. Also pretty simple. It's just a little bit different where you have to be exactly over it. Whereas with that one, you just kind of be, with the McHitch, you just have to be, in general, near the hole. And uh, back it up in there, and then you're fine. Pros and so, cons to either one? Um, no, it's just a matter of preference. I, either one of them will, will um, serve its purpose, and will do what, what needs to be done. Um, probably for the less skilled backer upper, I would go with the McHitch. For the more skilled one, then the DO35, but either one of them, it's they're they're both great hitches um, here for the for the off-road market.